Australian Reptile Park General Manager Tim Faulkner is also answering an SOS. I've had a call from a mate, Dan. He's about half an hour away from the reptile park up in the mountains researching frogs. And he called me and said since it started raining a few nights ago, he's had some unexpected visitors. Exactly who those visitors are or what they are, he wouldn't tell me. I'm on my way up there now. Tim is on his way to the Wattigan State Forest to meet up with evolutionary biologist Daniel O'Brien. G'day boys. How you going Tim? Good mate, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Hey, g'day. Well, I'm intrigued. What's going on? Oh, all this rain. It's brought out some creepy crawlies. Your time of stuff. Oh yeah? Yeah. So you've been looking at your frogs? Yep, last and, four uh, months. And some of my mates have turned up. Yep, I don't want to touch them. We are talking eight legs or no legs? Eight legs, mate. Oh yeah? Yep. All right, eh? well where's the site? Just up here, mate. Yeah? Daniel has been studying the breeding habits of the red-backed toadlet for the past four months. So the frogs up here are so unique that the way they breed is pretty unknown to most scientists. So I'm up here to really understanding how these frogs are able to manage to breed successfully in such unpredictable environments. But in the last few days, some very dangerous intruders have been caught up in Daniel's traps. First trap? First trap. So. Hey, what's going on? The first thing I notice is you're not putting your hand in there. There's no way I'm putting my hands in these traps. I thought we are just looking at frogs. Yeah, frogs, plus a million other things. Look at that. Mate, this is why you're here. We checked the first trap, and it all makes sense. Now I know why he's got me here. Funnel web spiders are coming out now it's rain, and they're getting into his pitfall traps. Not exactly what you want to find when you're researching a toadlet. So you're looking at certainly Australia and possibly the world's deadliest spider. Jesus. Hey? So when that funnel web rears up, you can clearly see how big its fangs are and almost see the venom just dripping off the end of them. So there's no doubt in my mind that if one of those was to latch onto your finger, it would pump you full of venom. Look at that. Now I know why you're not putting your fingers <laughs> in there. There's no way. Look at him. That's a male. Funnel web spider. Tim is at the Wadigan State Forest, about 30 minutes from the Australian Reptile Park. That is a big boy. He's responding to a call for help from Daniel, a researching biologist who's been finding funnel web spiders in his frog traps. It's understandable that Dan doesn't want to bump into funnel webs in his traps. They're Australia and arguably the world's deadliest spider. If he puts his hand in to grab out a toadler and gets a nip from a funnel web, he's in real strife. If I can use one of your containers and some tongs, I might show you how to catch him safely without putting your fingers in there. I'll take whatever we catch today home and please, if you get more, we want them. OK, you can keep them. <laughs> I'm really happy to see funnel webs here. And that's because the Reptile Park is the sole supplier of funnel web venom to make any venom. Anyone that gets bitten by a funnel web spider in Australia, their life is saved because of the spiders we milk at the reptile park. I find a honey pot like this, that's a good day. First, just put a little bit of moist earth. That's enough. And yep. uh, you should just be able to scoop him up without even flicking him. Oh, yeah. And then just keep your fingers away. Sometimes they get their legs on the outside. Put him down in there. One funnel web spider. <laughs> you think we're going to get a few? I reckon we can get a few after this rain. Jeez, I hope so. Every day I have to be out here sticking my hands in these buckets, possibly risking my myself with these funnel web spiders. So if I can learn how to bottle these up and get them back to the reptile park, I'll probably save myself a bite or two. What a wonderful spot. Just up here, mate. In the Wadigan State Forest, Tim is checking research traps for funnel web spiders. Nobody home? Nothing in that one. Pat. Next one. Continue on. Heavy rains have lured the dangerous creepy crawlies into the pits, which are meant to catch redback toadlets. Anyone home? All right, let's see what we get in this bucket. We've got a frog Whoop, yeah. and a spider. Oh, Jeez. We've got both in the same bucket. The first thing that comes to my mind is, have you ever seen a frog hurt from a spider? Not once. I think the, the funnel web venom, I know it's dangerous to humans and invertebrates, maybe it doesn't affect the frog. But in the same sense, those frogs have their own toxins that they secrete through their skin that makes them distasteful to predators, so... An uneasy truce. Yep, that's it. I'll get the spider. Yep, let's get him out of there. You get your frog. 
That's another spider for me. I'm a happy boy. Right, yeah. Now I feel comfortable to put my hand in there. Yeah. Put that in there. What do you got there? So this is a little male, it looks like. So these ones have a unique ventral marking, so we can tell uh, who's who. Look at that. Amazing, isn't it? The red-backed toadlet's just beautiful, and I've never seen one before. It's obvious where they get their name from. But contrasting to that is that Dan flips it over and the pattern on the belly is black and white. And it's like a fingerprint. They're all unique and individual, and that's how he identifies each toadlet. So we'll process now. Can, do you want to be scribed? Yeah, love to. Sweet. 3.3 grams. We'll just get a measurement. And that's 33 millimetres. All right, that's good. So we'll release this one. OK. So just a scratch here is fine? Yep, that's good. With the frog safely released, there's one last trap for Tim to check. Last trap. Oh, one more, see what we get. Oh, I can already see oh, somewhere. there it is. <laughs> Another spider. Come on, buddy. Spider number three. Done and dusted. Well, mate, they're precious to me, fed income they are, and if you keep catching them now you know how, I'd come up here and pick them up day after day. Well, I'm sure I can keep them coming. Yeah, please. Very important for us. No worries. I'm happy. I've got three spiders. That's not bad for a morning's work. They'll come back with me now to the reptile park and they'll become a part of our venom program. See you, mate. See you, Tim. Come on, buddy. He is vicious. He's not going to have any trouble milking. As soon as I touch a leg or you hit that surface, boom, he's up fang showing. That's exactly what we want. Back at the park, Tim is about to take on one of the most dangerous jobs, milking a funnel web spider. The Australian Reptile Park is the sole supplier of funnel web any venom. We keep up to 300 funnel webs at any one time, and that's because it can take up to a thousand milkings to make one ampule of antivenom. Today's contributor to the venom bank is one of the lethal spiders Tim took from the Watergan State Forest. Our little mate here today is a male funnel web spider, and although he is much smaller than females, he's five times more toxic, which makes him five times more dangerous. This is how we extract the venom. So this is a glass cylinder, and this pipe leads to a small vacuum. So what we actually do is when the spider rears up, there we go, there's venom on the end of the fang. There we go, now I've got it. It's only a small amount, but it all adds up. In that is the venom of a thousand spiders, and we're now sending that off to the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories to be made into antivenom. So now, Dan's Redback Toadlet Research Program is helping our life-saving anti-venom program. I'm glad he called. <laughs>